So, sorcery in Elden Ring uh, is incredibly strong. It absolutely trucks some bosses, but there are other bosses where they're actually harder to beat using spells, and I think Melania is one of them. I would say this guide's more dedicated for people who want to challenge themselves or restrict themselves in some way by either doing a specific, specific build, like I'm doing a wizard build uh, here in this run. You know, uh, want to not use summons, uh, one-shot multi-buff builds, or basically power farming um, for, for hours to basically bust through, bust through bosses with higher stats. For my build, look first at my level. As you can see, I'm level 120. Uh, this, is, this is the meta PvP level, and I think it's the most organic level that, that people get to when playing through the game normally. I'm sat at 31 vigor, not a crazy amount of vigor, especially for this fight. That puts me in one shot range for quite a few of Millennia's spells. Um, sat at 70 intelligence. This um, is because some of the high end spells require a lot of intelligence anyway, so I have this just so I can cast those final spells. And I also have 24 faith because I like the death spells. I like the death sorceries. They require faith. I think they're pretty good. The death rancor spells have really good tracking. So I use them. Uh, you, of course, don't have to. And if you don't like using the death spells, go ahead and take those faith points and pump them into vigor. You're going to get a lot out of that. If you don't want to pump them into vigor, if you're already sat at 40 vigor or you know, you're already sat at a high level of vigor, maybe put them in dexterity so that you can cast spells quicker, uh, which is a benefit of dexterity. Going into the gear that I'm using, starting with the talismans. Now, one thing that I would just say as a general rule about the talismans that I don't hear many people talk about. The boosts or the um, effects of talismans. You should only take a talisman if the effect that it gives is actually going to change the fight in some way. Change either the number of hits you can take from the boss or change the number of hits you need to give the boss to kill the boss. This uh, Dragon Quest Great Shield Talisman enormously boosts physical damage negation. I don't know what vigor you're currently sat on on your account. You might be doing a soul level one run as far as I'm aware. Um, and what that means is, is if you're getting one shot by everything anyway, regardless of whether or not you equip this uh, you equip this talisman, then don't take it because it's not going to change the fight at all. If something does more than 100% of your health, even with this boost, then it's a complete waste. And this also goes for some of these um, sealed uh, talismans as well. Marika's Garskill actually gives quite good um, wizard-based stats, uh, sorcery-based stats. But it has this it has this caveat where it says oh yeah but increases damage taken this is only relevant if the increase in damage taken means that you can't survive something that you would have survived beforehand for me i either get one shot by a millennial attack or i survive one millennial attack and then get killed by the next one and that remains true regardless of how much damage i take um, with the increase of this seal so I don't use this because I didn't need the additional stats and I thought the other talismans were better for me. But if you need those stats, if those stats are a big help to you, then go ahead and take it if you can survive the same amount of hits anyway. And that also goes for the other damage negation stats. Uh, you've got the Pearl Drake Talisman. This vastly boosts non-physical damage negation. I would only take this talisman. This talisman can be really good, but I would only take it if equipping this is going to allow you to survive Melania's uh, Scarlet Flower spell. If it does, then it's very good. If it doesn't, don't bother, because there are better options. I took as my second talisman the Graven Mass talisman. This greatly raises the potency of sorceries. I think the boost is about 8%. Uh, definitely, uh, I would say it's definitely worth it. You know, it just reduces the amount of casts that you need to get off in order to, in order to kill the boss. For the final two, I would say these are the ones that you're most likely to change. These are the ones that's most clear to change. I use both ritual talismans, so I've got the ritual shield talisman and I've got the ritual sword talisman. Now, both of these give me boosts when my HP is sat at its maximum. And the reason that I did this is because I have to have my HP sat at maximum during this fight anyway, because if it dips, there's a lot of stuff that I then can't survive, as you can see, and as you saw before, I've only got 31 vigor, right? So I have to sit at full health in order to, in order to play this fight realistically, in order to survive some stuff. So these just make sense. I, I know the Ritual Sword Talisman says raises attack power, and uh, you, 
might be a bit confused because the game uses words like, you know, attack power, spell power, skill power. This does increase the damage of spells. Um, there's some there's some talismans and some buffs where they talk about attack power where it seems to not affect the um, damage of spells, but this one does. Alternatives to these include the Graven School Talisman. This raises the potency of sorceries. I think this one gives you 4%. This one is about half as good as this one. Um, so you put them both together and you just get increased damage. I think there are better buffs out there, but if you if you either don't have this upgraded version of the Graven Talisman, or you just feel like you want the extra damage, then go ahead and equip that. If you're using mist base spells, then the Old Lord's Talisman is really good. If you're putting it on the Frost Mist or the, um, the the Life Drain Mist, that can be really good. As I mentioned before, Pearl Drake Talisman, if it helps you survive um, some of the Scarlet Rot attacks, some of the um, AoEs. You've got the Stargazer Heirloom. Uh, the Stargazer Heirloom just gives you five free intelligence with no downside. If you need this to sort of get enough intelligence together so you can cast a higher level spell, then this is definitely worth it. Um, pretty much no brainer. If you have relatively low intelligence, then this could also be worth it as well because um, five points at a lower level are worth more than five points at a higher level. In addition to that, anything that uh, increases stamina and equip load can be quite good. Uh, there is, I think there is another arsenal charm, yeah, that, that I just haven't got on this character, but this could be good if it takes you down to being a light roller instead of a medium roller. Yeah, if you're not aware, there are kind of you know different speeds at which you roll and they're dictated by your uh, your equip load versus your um, maximum load. So here I'm on, a, I'm on a medium load. But if equipping these would take you down to a light roll and you like light rolling because it is slightly more effective for dodging then go ahead and do that if that's what you feel comfortable with these boosts to um, hp restoration and cerulean to your restoration these can be good especially the hp one if you're using the ritual talismans like i am because that that, that boost might be what you need to hit 100 percent or alternatively the blessed dew talisman can be good if you're using the rituals as well because you need to be sat at 100% and, some, and depending on how much health you've got, one pot might not take you there. Uh, it might take you close and having this talisman will then allow you to naturally uh, reach 100% health without using another pot, which helps you space that out uh, throughout, throughout the fight so you don't use all your, your resources too early. That can be quite good. Likewise, we've got the Fire Scorpion charm. If you like the fire-based sorceries, uh, this this can be good. This raises the fire attack. Uh, I, I didn't actually test this. I don't know what the number increase is. I suspect it's some. It's either four or eight percent because that seems to be a number that from software have gone with. And then as for the lowers damage negation, the same considerations um, that went into using the seals would go into using this. So you know, does that lower damage negation? change the fight materially in any way for you does it mean that you then can't survive something that you would have survived before these uh, feather branch particularly the red feather branch raises attack power when hp is low this does affect spells i believe so you could use this i don't like sitting on low health um but some people you know if you feel confident in your abilities to dodge which we'll go over in a minute uh, then this could be a viable a viable option for you now, as for my gear, I've got the storage stuff here, but I used this Carrion Regal Scepter. This is only at plus nine, and I left it at plus nine because I think a lot of people, myself included, kind of like holding on to the, uh, the final stones, this, so this, this, the Great Summer Stones, and I didn't want to do this fight with something that you couldn't really easily get. So the Carrion Regal Scepter, you get this from Renala's um, Remembrance, you trade it in and you can you can buy the staff with that. Um, or alternatives to that, you've got the Lustat's Glintstone Staff. This is a very good uh, staff. This actually just enhances the power of all sorceries, uh, consumes additional FP. Obviously I don't know what level you are, you might have loads of FP, you could be sat at level 200 plus um, and it might not be the biggest deal for you having this additional FP consumption. So this is a very good stat. I think I think this is one of the best staffs in the game. Uh, likewise, you could use the Prince of Death's staff. This boosts death sorceries, uh, and I do like using death sorceries. So this is this is a good staff. I didn't use this for this fight, mainly just because I just quite like having the Carrion Regal Scepter. But I think this technically is the best staff in the game at a higher level. As you can see, it's got two faiths, it's got two um, 
scalings that are here, so it's got int and fear. So if you have a high level character where you've got both int and fear, this staff actually achieves the highest numbers, I believe, well, or over any other staff, even over the Lustat staff. But it depends on your level at a lower level. Um, when your faith isn't that high, then the Lustat staff will do more. But as you go up and up, then the Prince of Death staff starts to take over. They're the only staffs I would recommend using. If you like glint blades, I, I don't recommend using glint blades, blades for Melania, but if you like glint blades, then maybe you'd want to use the Carrion glint blade staff. I have cats off to you if you do beat the staff, if you do beat Melania using glint blades, because uh, it's far riskier and you get punished a lot more. So uh, respect if you do that. Going to the last actually relevant bit of gear is the headpiece. The, the other piece, I just wear these. I just wear the, the robe and the legs and stuff because they look good. That's the only reason I do that. Uh, but the Snow Witch hat actually boosts cold sorceries. And the spell that I choose is a cold sorcery for this, uh, uh, for this fight. However, if you need uh, intelligence to get yourself up to using some of the higher level stuff, the Queen's Crescent Crown gives three intelligence for free. These heads give uh, various um, intelligence boosts, but they do punish you in some way. So they, you know, if we look at this one, uh, this increases intelligence, but knocks down your HP and stamina. Um, there's the Battle Mage one, uh, sorry, the, the, the Hymer one. Uh, this knocks off FP and gives you intelligence. So you can you can put combinations of these together depending on how much intelligence you want or need, depending on how far off of casting certain abilities you are. Uh, the Spellblade's pointed hat, this uh, increases just the regular glintstone sorceries. I didn't I don't think glintstone sorceries work very well against Melania. Uh, maybe you have more luck than I do, but I would recommend not using that. And then of course there is the um, Azures and the Lustats. These both increase the damage of the um, of the legendary spells of either as you as comment or the the star spell that Lustat has, you may want to equip these. Or there's actually the Great Hood. Um, the Great Hood boosts intelligence and faith to the detriment of uh, HP. So, you know, however you want to put these together, I just use the Snow Witch hat because I like the boost to cold sorcery. The boost to the cold sorcery isn't that big in terms of just raw damage. Um, it's, a, it's a very small increase using just a level 1 astrologer staff by um, Rani Full Moon, uh, Rani's Dark Moon spell hit 1297 with the hat and 1214 without the hat so it's a really so it, is, it is a small increase it's, it's you know maybe about about 70 damage but I think it boosts the rate at which frost builds up uh, that's really hard to measure where the rate at which frost builds up because I can't see the meter and some of them, the frost spell uh, the frost moon spell it does so much frost damage and single hit anyway that it's quite hard to tell but i think it does and that is it for just my gear uh, the flask i would always recommend for a wizard uh, for a wizard sorcery build using the cerulean hidden tier so you've got the eliminate all fp consumption even if you're not using the years years comet spell just go ahead and use this because it will basically let you spam your strongest spell for free for a certain amount of time and Millennia in her second phase does give you an opening to get some use out of that and then for the second for the second buff I really like the tier that gives you one free hit uh, this obviously me sat 31 vigor this lets me survive something um, that I wouldn't otherwise survive and I have a particular time in the fight that I always use this and it, it has saved fights for me uh, on quite a few occasions and kept me in there so I think this one's the best. If you don't feel like you need it, then just go ahead and equip the one that gives you more magic damage um, or the one that slowly restores health if you're taking the Ritual Sword Talismans. It's really up to you, but I would go for that. And for my um, allocation of flasks, I just went six to eight. Now we go to the spells. The main spell that I used for this is Rani's Dark Moon. Uh, this spell, I think, is really good for Melania. Uh, this was my bread and butter spell. It does more damage than the alternative moon spell, which is Renala's Full Moon. It does more damage, 
it is a cold space spell, so it builds up the frostbite effect. Uh, be careful when using the wiki. The wiki doesn't actually have Rani's Dark Moon listed as a frost spell, at least at the time of making this video, but it is a frost spell. It does inflict frostbite, and with frostbite, you get the initial burst of damage, and then you get more damage from your spells afterwards while the uh, target's frost frostbitten. I think it's a great spell. It is. I don't really understand what situations you would use Ranala's uh, moon spell over Rani's because in all of the tests that I did, Rani's does more damage and inflicts frost. So I don't really understand what the benefit of using the full moon is. I don't know why it costs more intelligence. I might be missing something obvious here. And to boot, as I mentioned before, I use the uh, Karian Regal Scepter. This boosts full moon sorcery, but Rani's Dark Moon spell isn't a full moon sorcery spell. I've tested this. The full moon sorcery buff that you get from the Karian Regal Scepter is an 8% buff, and that 8% doesn't apply to Rani's spell, so it's stronger even without the um, full moon sorcery buff inside. So I don't really understand. I don't really understand the benefit of it. Uh, they both have a general moon debuff. Um, hold on, I'll see if I can get it up. They both have a moon debuff that dispels sorceries and reduces magic damage negation. Or maybe it's the build-up of both the frost and the moon debuff that you get from Rani's Dark Moon that makes it better because frost lowers damage absorption as well. So it could be that Underneath the other attributes on top, Renala's does slightly more damage, but when you factor in everything else, right, this Dark Moon, I think, is the best. Unless someone in the comments wants to uh, let me know and tell me why I'm wrong in that, but every test that I've done, Rani's Dark Moon wins out, um, wins out every time. On top of that, I use the Comet as you a spell. Now, I obviously said in the, uh, said in the intro that you know, don't cheese, whether or not you consider Comet Azure for this fight a cheese is up, is up to you. I do think Comet Azure cheeses some fights because it basically lets you just one-shot them. I, I accidentally did it to, Mo to Morg on this run. You can quite easily one-shot Morg um, without him even going into Phase 2 using this. Um, I don't consider Comet Azure to be a cheese in this fight because I think you really have to work for it and your timing has to be spot on in order to get the most out of it and because it takes because I, I would consider that to be taking skill that I would say that Comet as you is fair play for this fight uh, if you don't want to use Comet as you you can use Stars of Ruin you can actually get similar levels of damage with Stars than you can to the Comet not quite as much but Stars of Ruin's really consistent. Uh, you know, you, you pop it and you can get the same amount of damage out of it every time, whereas with the Comet, sometimes if RNG doesn't go your way, uh, you can get punished for using Comet, and you wouldn't otherwise get punished for using Stars. If you also consider Stars of Ruin to be a cheese, then you can go ahead and just use any other spell you want. Like I said, I like Ancient Death Rancor. I think this is a really good spell. Uh, for bosses that it tracks and does um, poise uh, damage to Melania so it will it will stagger her slightly which can give you a little bit of breathing room this Briar spell does hit it does hit but I, I think it, it, it's more difficult than the death spell to use I would stay away from any single target projectile spell uh, Millennia, she input reads, and if you cast, like, let's just say you cast the Great Glintstone Shard, you hit at a ratio of about three misses to one hit, I think. And that's it's just because she, she input reads, as soon as you press the button, she'll sidestep, and then if you cast again, she'll sidestep again, and then if you cast again, she'll often sidestep, and then by then she'll be almost on top of you, and then you might hit the fourth you might hit the fourth um, projectile but you are then running the risk of just getting hit yourself and basically healing her for whatever damage you've just done so I, f I find these really difficult to use against Melania because of her input reads and there are a few bosses that input read really well um, Loretta's Mastery can get you through phase one in kind of like the same way that the Dark Moon can you know you I think it's based on when Melania recognizes that a, that a spell has been cast because with the with the Dark Moon and with the Full Moon spell as well, 
while you're preparing the spell, she actually doesn't respond. And then she only responds when the moon sets off, but the moon sets off at quite a slow speed and it's quite big. It's just the tracking and the ability to hit her with this spell is just really good. And the uh, boar masteries as well, the two Loretta's um, abilities kind of do the same thing. She she doesn't, she they track really well and she doesn't dodge at the right time to avoid them. Glint, uh, glint blades, so those are the swords that you summon above your head. They, they do hit her actually but I just couldn't get enough damage out of them to, to hurry the fight along. I was just constantly casting them and then it just feels like they just don't do much damage at all. And then the longer the fight goes on, the more likely you are to make a mistake. So I ended up staying away from them, but they can be, can be done. You can use them. Terra Magica, you, you do not have enough time to put that down and use it to any great effect, really. If you if you cast that, I've, I've tried doing it, particularly when I use the Comet Azure, but you just run out of time to the point where the extra damage you get from putting that down and using the Comet, the extra damage you get from that is less than, than the damage you would have got had you just cast Comet straight away because she moves. So that's what I would say about that spell. Some of the mist spells, I actually quite like the mist spells. You can basically put down this, the Night Maiden's Mist, and then you can put down the Frost Mist. And then if you're feeling, if you're feeling like it's working, you can put, you can start using the Zamor Ice Storm, basically just building up frost damage on her. This, this can be pretty good actually. Uh, you can stand in your own Frost Mist, but you cannot stand in the Night Maiden's Mist. So you can summon Frost Mist and then stand in it uh, and just dodge her spells until she gets frostbend. Uh, that could be that could be a viable strategy if you feel like challenging yourself. I think that could be quite hard, but you might you might enjoy, end up enjoying doing that. Firebase spells. These Rykard's Rancor is the main firebase spell that I would say that you try and use if you do want to go down this route. However, it is pretty inconsistent. Sometimes, if Melania gets caught in the Trail of Explosions, she will take a huge amount of damage. Other times, she will just completely uh, run past it. And it's a, it's a bit funny because this spell would be good if you and the boss weren't heading in, in different uh, in different directions. The boss is coming towards you and then you're trying to like, you're trying to go back a lot of the time. And that basically means that the boss only gets hit by one of the um, explosions in the trail. There are ways which you could move around. If you could try and dodge more and sort of stay tight, you could set the skull away, dodge one of Melania's attacks, and then run along the skull trail to try and get her to, um, to to take damage as the explosions follow the trail. It's quite complicated, but if you've enjoyed using the firebase spell so far, then that could be a viable option. Uh, rolling magma again you, you can shoot this if you're going to try and use this it's probably best to not target lock what I was doing to try and get some value out of this is I would shoot it on the floor and then try and stand try and stand on the bomb before it explodes so that she comes in for a hit and then gets hit by that it's quite difficult to do honestly all of this is so much harder than just um, than just the dark moon uh, and also a lot harder than the death spells but as I said, this is your run, so if you like these spells, then they, they can be done. But just know that, you know, for something like this, you're going to have more of a challenge getting it off. I used the Rani's Dark Moon, Comet Azure, and the Death Spell. So these are the spells that I ended up using for my successful runs. I think this is the best, the best combo. In addition to that, I just want to go over some consumables as well. These two prawns that you get from um, Black Art Shop, uh, these are good, greatly boost physical damage negation. These could end up saving you um, from death from an attack, so I would consider using these. Um, depends, you might not get hit much in phase one, but you know before you launch the final attack to send yourself into phase two, you might want to pop off these and get rid of it that way. Also having the um, Scarlet Rot boluses can be really good as well. The Rune Arcs. I didn't use any Rune Arcs for this, uh, but I know some people do like using them. The root, the great rune that you use should depend on what level you are, and this goes for all bosses and for all builds. So Godric's great rune is better the lower level you are, and that's because, in, in case you don't know, the stat distribute the way stats work in this game is that they kind of soft cap at 40 and that means that every point beyond 40 is worth less than the points before 40 so this spell uh, sorry this this great rune gives you a stat increases across the board and if all of the stats increase or more or nearly all of them are below 40 then you're going to get maximum value out of this 
So I'm at 31 vigor. Five vigor for me to take it up to 36 is really good. <laughs> that is a good health increase that's sort of on par with these. The, the Redan's Great Room gives you HP, FP, and stamina. Because my other stats are quite low, this almost gives me that and more anyway. So for me, Godric's, for me, sitting at the level, Godric's Great Room is easily the best one because. Um, if you don't know, strength gives you damage mitigation as well. Um, dexterity lowers cast time. Faith gives you uh, some damage mitigation. It gives you like holy damage mitigation and something else. Uh, same with same with arcane. Arcane affects some sorceries. So you get fat, you get all those points all across the board, and they're just worth more. Um, the higher level you are, the more you'll want some of this other stuff. You know, maybe you just want the flat HP for more guts if you're a higher level because. If you're sat on all level 99s, for example, having five extras not going to be worth anywhere near as much for you as it is for me. So that's just something to bear in mind about the great runes. For, for, for almost everyone, I think Godric's is the best. All right, let's get into the actual fight itself. Okay, so at the start of the fight, you basically want to just focus on first keeping your distance as much as possible and using your big hit spell um, when you're far enough away that you're safe. Uh, you can see from uh, using my Ronnie's Dark Moon here, you can see the frost uh, building up and it procs here. That's, I think that's a substantial amount of damage, especially in new games. So now that now that the frost is procced, um, the boss is frost bitten, and you can see the amplified da damage from that effect as well. So that, like I said, the Ronnie's Dark Moon um, it applies the moon debuff and the frost debuff, which just makes you hit even harder. Focusing on that, keeping my distance where possible, and now we're going to get to kind of the first major hurdle that a lot of people uh, go against when they fight Millennia, and that's the Waterfowl Dance. This is a three-staged attack. She comes at you with three different flurries all together, all really closely timed. And what you want to do is you want to follow what I'm doing here. You want to basically have enough distance when she starts such that you can avoid the first two attacks, but there's no way to avoid the third attack. So you roll into and through the third attack. The third attack is easily the most deadly. Now, you can end up um, stuck uh, between the boss and a wall, <laughs> which is what happens to be here. And this can be fatal. Sometimes there's nothing you can do about it. I die here. But there, there are ways to... Um, lower your chances of dying when you get caught and that is by first of all trying to only get hit by the middle flurry you can see here I get caught again um, basically I just hit the door I don't realize how far back I am and you always try and give yourself enough space to run backwards but he here's an example of me surviving actually getting caught I actually accept some hits early on because I want to focus on dodging the third attack the third attack is the one that's most likely to kill you um, here we go again, so she comes in for the first attack, I just accept that I'm getting hit by the second one, and then focus on rolling through the third one. So, it, it's just rolling through the third attack is basically the most consistent way to survive that. Interestingly, like you just saw here, the frost proc can actually take her out of the um, waterfowl attack animation. This doesn't happen once she's frost bitten, only while the frost buildup is actually happening. Um, at other points in this first phase though, just focus on uh, running away. She has a lot of uh, close uh, melee moves like she's seeing here. And instead of trying to dodge them, instead of rolling through her, I am just uh, running backwards. You do have to dodge the lunge, but apart from that, uh, the first phase is fairly simple and you should have no trouble getting it down at the end. It's just another example of me doing the dodge through the waterfowl dance again, just keep enough distance, be aware that you can't dodge the third one realistically, or at least you can't run away from the third one. And here I am getting set up for the start of phase two. If you look, if you saw on the bottom left, I actually equipped my wondrous uh, psychic flask and comment zero. I pop that flask straight away, dodge this attack, and I'm now ready to cast my Comet Azure because I've got the free FP because I cast that attack before she came down and I also have one free hit now this move here this sweeping arc and lunge if you follow my lead here this depends on what spell you've chosen but if you follow my lead and use Comet Azure she will almost always follow up with that same spell so get ready for that um, two stage dodge this spell here um, this is an example of the moon missing. This is quite a rare occasion. Uh, there is a window of opportunity when she uses her six ghosts attack to get some damage in, but it really depends on how far away you are from her. 
this is the enhanced waterfowl dancer. This is actually slightly more difficult to dodge um, in this phase because she's usually closer. She's a lot more aggressive in phase two. But as you can see there, basically ate the middle bit of damage and then chose to focus on dodging the final flurry of attacks and survived out. There is another technique, dodging the waterfowl dance, that involves uh, rolling in and hugging the boss during the second flurry of attacks. However, I find this approach uh, much easier to learn and more consistent to use uh, if you can space properly. This move here, um, where she kind of thrusts her sword into the floor and causes a rot explosion, there is a window of opportunity to punish this move here. However, don't do it with a slow cast spell like I'm doing here because she can recover immediately after casting that spell and it could just lead to you getting caught like I've done there. So use a fast spell here. Here I do basically the exact same thing using the Stars of Ruin much faster and she recovers really quickly but I'm not stuck in my moon cast here. I can get straight out there. This right here is the money spell really for any sorcerer based build. This um, Scarlet Rot Flower this gives you loads of time to get several casts off, use whatever spell you want, but the more she casts at, the better it is for you. Anyway, what I'm going to do now is just play a whole fight uh, with all of this woven together. Thanks for watching.
the mark of true 